So in today's video, we're going to take a look on wrist curls, specifically with free weights or armor sling. Now, there's a lot of debate on the wrist curls with the barbell, the dumbbells, everything. So, what we'll take a look is the barbell curls, the easy bar curls, and two variations of the dumbbell wrist curl that will help you improve the mass of the forearms. Now, I don't want to get into details of the wrist curls with uh, multi spinner, uh, wrist wrench, and other things because not everybody has access to a pulley system or they are lazy to build a thing like this. And we are going to discuss about the stuff that everybody has access if they want to go to a gym or easier buy something at home and work on with it or armors. So let's start with barbell wrist curls. Now, <laughs> I haven't been done wrist curls for uh, armor sling with the barbell for a very long time. When I was starting, I was using it a ton, but now I'm starting to work mostly on the pulley with the multi spinner and the wrist range and I ditched the free weights like I'm doing only with the dumbbell one time a week. So how people like to do is by taking the barbell, now I'm putting no weight of all and they like to curl but there's one flow in this. The thing is that the wrists, when they flex, so this is the extended position because you want to do a very long range of motion, full range and building the most amount of tissue in there, creating a lot of stimulus because we know that from this to here is the most beneficial. Now, with the barbell, you kind of have access to only the bottom half because you do this. I know that it's the most beneficial, but it's kind of better to go with a full range of motion because it develops coordination in uh, some let, bad pay places to say. Now, when I was doing them, I was clearly allowed to use very big weights. Not allowed, but yeah, <laughs> you get what I'm saying. I was clearly using very big weights, but it gave me forearm splints. That's because the wrists, when they curl, they ordinarily deviate, so they don't just curl straight, they deviate, which means that when we start, so we go like this, and from here we've got only two to three degrees until the wrist start to deviate, and with heavy weights it hurts. Now you can also put the thumb under and it will give a little bit more relief not ultra much relief but it's better now yeah do that part but you will see that it's not that good also you can, uh, when they start to deviate, you can let the grip go loose and 
you will still get a little bit of splints but not that bad but that's bad because we can't measure we can't progress as easy and other things now some people's yeah ditch this board and they take an easy curl bar now we've got again a same stupid thing when you curl it's not that good enough no oh 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 how can I cut them? Like this, good. So, by gripping it like this, yes, you can do the upper portion of the lift without letting loose, but when you start to approach the end range of motion, boom, it all stops because of pain. The Easy curl bar kind of lets them deviate as much as possible, but it doesn't leave you to straighten it. Now, do whatever you want, but I have some better options. This is good if you are an armor sword who does only the upper portion. Just like me, I'm uh, never going into the negative position. Now, you can also go with the barbell and grab it by one side and do one arm wrist curls. See? This, when we have weights, it's hard to balance also. You don't have the forearm splints. You can go, I recommend to everybody going into the negative position because when you're a beginner and don't know how to apply your pressures on the table, when you do only the upper portion or micro reps, you kind of teach your body that the pressure is going straight sideways, but most of the time the pressure from a top roller comes to hit the fingers and then unfold the wrist so it's hard to balance like this great for the coordination and for the stabilizer muscle like the pronator and the supinator that's on this side now how I like to teach people is by grabbing a regular ass dumbbell, put your thumb over, lean in it, just good, and great eccentric, full range of motion, great contraction. You can see that it rotates, but it's better. Now, <coughs> this is <laughs> 10 times better <coughs> because it will truly develop your forearm without getting any pain. You can see that I'm not even using any fat grip or nothing just a regular dumbbell <clears throat> now <clears throat> why I do them like this <clears throat> it's because just stay down it's because when you do them and you are supinated <clears throat> you kind of put a necessary strain <clears throat> and compression on the wrist yeah you can use a little bit more weight because the forearm flexors are in their stretched position and they are stronger there 
Don't get stupid and do things bad. You can suffer from compression. So, I have seen people do them also like this when they grab a dumbbell and they place it right here. So, I was doing them right here. But they also support the wrist a little bit and they only do the upper part yeah upper part i know that it's great but it's still not the best thing because i've seen people use ungodly weights but i can top roll them for easy only 40 to 50 percent of my energy now let's do a quick pause and tell you if you haven't subscribed yet please consider it give me a like if you like what I do to don't miss any new videos click the notification button and let's get straight back in the video so, just grab the dumbbell like this, go into a neutral position and extend fully, big stretch, full flexion, feel the muscle tensing and boom, boom. I am going to get a pump by doing these things. This is going to make people kind of smile at you because you are going to use very light weights very light weights like if here you can do 40 kilos here maybe you will do it 50 on set or 17 kilos now it depends on how much the wrist is supported by the knee Other ways, or other way, when you are approaching a competition and you want to pick out, just grab a small fat grip. I'm using this because I'm improvising them because I kind of thrown out the fat grips because I stopped working with free weights most of the time I'm mostly using my pulley system to show them oh come here so let's wrap it just a bit depends on what weight category you are and just take the dumbbell with the thumb and go like this and do it and like this and this will place the tension in this part of the wrist and when we straighten the wrist we get finger pressure great now uh, I've shown in a video how to target your finger pressure Best by using the wrist wrench links in the description back again what can I say you can also pick out with free weights I'm going to show you the next week how to pick out for a tournament by using the Devon Lark program I done it for two weeks because I've got a competition next week, not this week, where I will plan to compete. I picked it out, reached insane numbers, and if you wanna watch the Devon Lord program review, 
where I talk about some flaws to it, how it works, from where it comes, what it contains, and things like that. Don't miss it, because it's a great guide, it's a great thing, and bye, and see you in the next video.